Hi guys, and thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Joyce, and I share information on how you can find tips on how to immigrate to Canada. In case you're new here, thank you for coming. Please check whether you have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Like this video <laughs> and let's continue learning. Any information that I share here is not legal advice. In case you need a lawyer or an immigration consultant, you may find one under IRCC or we have our own that I work with. You can always send me an email if you need any guidance. So guys, today we will be talking about something very, very important. For you to do Canada immigration, you cannot be there without knowing what is LMIA. LMIA is Labor Market Impact Assessment. I've learned that there are so many people that do not know the meaning of LMIA in Canada. It's not there in the US, it's not there in any other country. So for you to understand Canada immigration, you may need to learn what LMIA means. So a labor market impact assessment is a document that an employer in Canada may need to get before hiring a foreign worker. So a positive LMIA will show that there is a need for a foreign worker to fill the job. It will also show that no Canadian worker or permanent resident is available to do the job. A positive LMIA is sometimes called a confirmation letter. So if the employer needs an LMIA, they must apply for one. Once an employer gets the LMIA, the worker can apply for a work permit. To apply for a work permit, a worker needs a job offer or a job offer letter, a contract, a copy of LMIA, and an LMIA number. So guys, according to you, what do you think LMIA is? Because this is just highlighted here by, I am reading this under canada.ca website. And there's so much that you may need to learn about an LMIA. So labor market impact assessment. So employers of some types of temporary workers need to get LMIA before the workers apply for a work permit. An LMIA is a document from Employment and Social Development Canada that gives the employer permission to hire a temporary worker. So if you are an employer, find out if you need an LMIA. So if you're a worker, you can answer a few questions to find out. There are a few links here that I'm going to share with you on the description so that you can get to learn. So the kind of work permit you can apply for and the steps your employer needs to take before you submit your work permit application. Guys, remember work permit. I think we need to do another video on work permit because there are different types of work permit. There's an open work permit, there's a closed work permit, there's a work permit that you can apply within Canada, there's a work permit that you can apply outside Canada. Now, all this, the, all these work permits will be coming because you're coming as a temporary worker or a temporary foreign worker. So if you're not a temporary foreign worker, then it means that you're a permanent resident. Because how else would you work in Canada? You can only work in Canada if you're either a citizen of Canada, a, a, a permanent resident of Canada, or a temporary foreign worker. So LMIA, Labor Market Impact Assessment, is a document that is issued to the uh, employers, hmm? employers who qualify to recruit foreigners to come and work under temporary basis. Temporary basis means up to two years. So in this case, what they are trying to do is that actually why they have created this LMI thing is so that you can get an opportunity to come and work in Canada for at least two years and then you, you gain Canadian experience so that you qualify to apply for permanent resident. Because remember, for you to apply for permanent resident, you have to have worked in Canada for at least one year. So your permanent resident uh, qualifies from the time when you accumulate at least one year after working in Canada for one year. That's why even international students, after graduation, they get open work permit and they can work in Canada for one year, gain Canadian experience, enter Canadian experience class and then they can apply for work. They can apply for permanent resident. Now, this LMIA, huh? 
this labor market impact assessment is now a document that is going to be issued. Is that actually the initiative or the initiator of this process is the employer. Let's say, for example, Joyce Kainas Canada. I'm an, I'm an employer in Canada. As you all know, I'm an employer in Canada. If I need to hire you as a foreign worker and a temporary class, huh, I need to apply for this LMIA. It's a certificate. What happens is that I'm going to advertise for your job on the job banks. Then once I advertise for your job, of course, through my lawyers, most of the times, then once I advertise for your job, maybe for about 28 days, if this job is claimed by a Canadian citizen or a permanent re resident, then I end up getting a negative LMIA. If this job is not claimed by a Canadian citizen, or a permanent resident in these 28 days, then I end up getting a positive LMIA. Now, there is a fee that is normally paid for this LMIA, and the government of Canada does not expect the employees to pay for this fee. So this fee is catered by the employer in Canada. So it's actually illegal to ask money from the employers so that you can give them jobs. So normally what happens is that if I want to hire you, I'm the one who is supposed to, to uh, you know, to cater for the fees, all the fees for LMIA and all the fees to do your LMIA. And then once I get a positive LMIA, then you can go ahead and apply for work permit. Either if you're outside Canada, you can go ahead and apply. If you're inside Canada, you can apply. Okay, so that is how, what is an LMIA? Because most of you are asking me, Joyce, what is LMIA when I meet with the nurses? Now, this is exactly what it means to have an LMIA. So when you're coming and uh, check the program that is bringing you to Canada, because some of the programs, most of the programs will require you to have an LMIA. Now, there's another class of LMIA exempt employers. So there are some, I did that video and it's going to be on the description of this, this one. I think I did it last week or last week, but one, and I did a video of several skills or several careers or several profession, professions that do not require LMI for, for those people to work in Canada. I, I gave a list of, I did a very well elaborated video on careers that do not require LMI for them to work in Canada. So you maybe you may need to read that, to watch that video so that you can understand more on how you can get exempted from using an LMIA. Otherwise, that is what it means to be, to be I mean, to have an LMIA positive, a positive LMIA for foreign workers. In case you have any questions, you can comment on the comments or you can contact lawyers or immigration consultants. For my nurses, our Telegram is a social platform where I meet with the, the nurses because I'm also a nurse. I am a foreign, I'm a foreign trained nurse or internationally trained nurse. I've gone through the whole of this process. So at least I have tips here and there for them to learn how they can get their license to practice in Canada. If you want to join the group for the nurses, only the nurses, strictly the nurses, please uh, send me an email on joycecanada3 joycecanada3 at gmail.com and you can also attach your license. If you do not attach your license, we are not going to accept you in the group. So joycecanada3 at gmail.com. Please do not take any comments or any telegrams that are shared on the comments. They're all from scammers. Make sure that you join the right groups, the nurses. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.